Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I'm bringing them down to bite sized pieces today. Got some good stuff. First up, Fidelity Digital Assets touts Bitcoin credentials as publicly traded companies now hold over 600,000 Bitcoin. Ergo, they have almost 3% of the entire amount of Bitcoin. And what does this really mean for decentralization also? The IMF meeting was just held and Fed Chairman Jerome Powell updates efforts to create the digital dollar, says risks and trade-offs being thoroughly evaluated. And this is the same song and dance I've been hearing for the last year. But I will tell you, Jerome Powell did have a couple of good points. And these points were actually echoed by Raul Powell from Real Vision Finance. He's going to talk about timeline of central bank digital currencies or CBDCs and the end of cash in five years. And finally, Ripple CEO suggests Chinese President Xi Jinping could roll back Bitcoin. And this is a false narrative with a twist. So we'll go over all that, but let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today, hey, it's a good day if you own Bitcoin. Bitcoin is up pretty good and it's almost hitting 12,000. It is, uh, what is it, October 20th, around uh, 1 p.m. Texas time. So Bitcoin, again, doing great. And I think it could blast through that 12K mark and hopefully, uh, once we get past that, it'll be a level of support, not a level of resistance, but uh, we will see. 2.2% 24 hours and in seven day, 3.5%. Uh, so fantastic, great for Bitcoin and everything else is falling to the ground. So uh, Ethereum is down, Tether is down, XRP is down, uh, Bitcoin Cash, I mean, everything is down uh, except for Tron, Tron, whatever, 1.3%. So for all you Tron holders, fantastic work. You got a percent. I'm just kidding. I mean, whatever you guys want to do, Tron is... Uh, could be a good project. I don't really know too much about it. I know Justin Sun is a heck of a marketer, and that's pretty much about it. What else we got? Hey, OKB is up 5.7, although it is down 22% for the week because OKX Exchange had that issue with their founder, who apparently is the only one that can uh, approve transactions and holds the private keys, which is insanity. And of course, OKB is the uh, token for that exchange. So uh, even though it's uh, down 22%, it is up 5% for the day. So great. And as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, uh, I believe you still can't take any cryptocurrency or digital assets off of the OK exchange. Let me know. But as far as yesterday, uh, somebody who was actually a member said, uh, yeah, I can't do anything. Rep Bitcoin up is up uh, 2.5. Le Leo token 1%. Sure. Everything else is just majorly down. Uniswap. Wow. Took a big beat in 10%. Theta Network down 9%. My new favorite place. If you don't know, I'm doing uh, live streams over there, usually around 11 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time. And I try to go over uh, just what's going on in the day real quick, and it's a uh, great engagement because not a lot of people over there. I get to answer a bunch of questions. We get into good discussions. So if you got time, check the uh, description of every one of my videos, and it just says follow Dan. And the first one is Theta Network. And then really, that's about it. I mean, uh, look, if you're a dollar cost averaging, this is a sweet day. This is a great day for you because has anything changed? Again, like I said before, has anything changed? Uh, has you know, Bitcoin been hacked? Has uh, Vitalik Buterin come out and said, you know what, it's just a big scam. I don't care about you guys. You know, has, has Vladimir Putin come out and said, hey, I created Bitcoin. No, none of that's, none of that's, uh, nothing's really changed. But there is what I think is going on uh, as far as Bitcoin goes. And it's what, gonna, what we're going to talk about in today's first article. And I think it's going to continue as far as a trend into 2020. But there's bumps along the way. So let's just jump in. So this is what I'm talking about. Fidelity Digital Assets touts the Bitcoin credentials as publicly traded companies now hold over 600,000 Bitcoin. That's kind of a big number. So uh, what exactly is this? So FDA, not the Food and Drug Administration, but Fidelity Digital Assets, says diversifying an investment portfolio with Bitcoin is especially essential now when benchmark interest rates globally are near or below zero. And actually, Ralph Powell, uh, in, in this video, it's very long, 34 minutes. There's just a snippet I want to talk about, which is CBD season and no cash. But he does talk about this uh, very briefly and talks about how the dollar will strengthen. This is what he believes it to be. The dollar will strengthen uh, over the next uh, coming months. But as the IMF gets together and the global community starts to look at things and they say, hey, we need to actually get a better basket of currencies and not just get out or not just have the, the U.S. dollar as the uh, reserve currency. They're going to start to look at uh, a basket of CBDCs. And once it happens, things will, will greatly change. But the big thing was he talked about was uh, stagnant interest rates or negative right now in Europe. They're looking at uh, negative and they're stagnant right now. In America, they are they are just stagnant and they are talking about going negative. So once that happens, that is good news uh, for Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and digital assets. Because look, where else can you get uh, a good interest rate? Well, you can get it on investing into Bitcoin. And also you can put it on a place called Celsius, 
Got a nice little APY between uh, four and a half to 22%. So that's just something to look into. Anyhow, we'll get that later. But the opportunity cost of not allocating to Bitcoin is simply higher, explains FDA in its latest Bitcoin investment thesis. And it's very true. Look, uh, you can lose everything in cryptocurrency, but the upside potential is massive. And that is called an a asymmetrical investment. You put $1,000 in, yeah, you can lose 1000 but there's a great chance, uh, there's a good chance, I'll just say, is that it could go up 2x, 10x, 50x, 100x, depending on what you're into. Um, look, if you're in the top 20 as far as market cap, it's a little bit safer. Now, if you're going to go into like the uh, 2000 position, uh, some kind of small cap gem out there, yeah, uh, you're taking a little bit more risk. But uh, really, uh, what we're going to see over the next, I think, next one to two years, uh, when the bull run comes in 2021, I think it's going to be massive, but I could be wrong. Anyhow, FDA's assertions came come as one survey found that as many as 60% of investors survey believe that digital assets have a place in a portfolio. I personally believe it. That's why I'm invested heavily into crypto. And here's the interesting thing about correlations. The results from analysis of Bitcoin's correlation to other assets from January 2015 to September 2020 show the digital averaging 0.11. And what this really comes down to, I'm just going to blow this up a little bit. What it really comes down to is that if you have a perfect correlation, it's 1.00. The less correlated, the less the number. So if you take a look at uh, Bitcoin to Bitcoin, of course, it's 1.00. It's perfectly correlated Bitcoin to Bitcoin. Same thing, U.S. stocks uh, to U.S. stocks, U.S. small cap. to. So it's just, you know, going down this line here. So if you take a look at Bitcoin to U.S. stocks. Uh, it's actually more correlated, which is kind of odd, but not so much than gold. I found that surprising. I thought that gold would be a little bit more correlated to Bitcoin, but it is not. It is the U.S. stocks. However, uh, it is poorly correlated, and um, we will see how that plays out as things take a uh, walloping uh, coming up as far as the traditional markets. But I found it to be interesting because they, they take a look at this all the way back five years, and this is what they found. So uh, maybe. So moving to the meat and potatoes of it. In the meantime, the number of publicly traded companies holding Bitcoin as a reserve asset now has grown to 18. Let me read that again. 18 different publicly traded companies are holding a reserve asset of Bitcoin, which I, I found it interesting because I'm like, well, I can only right now I can really think of, you know, a handful uh, the big ones, MicroStrategy, uh, Michael Saylor, Square with Jack Dorsey. And then uh, the new one, which was Stonebridge, which they put like 110 million. So I was like, what's the other 18? And it says here, 18 companies, they hold a combined 612,000 Bitcoin, which is equivalent to 3% of total supply. So if you take a look at here, bitcointreasuries.org, and this is a great website. I'm going to link this in the description below. As a matter of fact, here's all the companies and here's what's happening. So you got the big one that we've been talking about the last two weeks, MicroStrategy. They got in at, they spent around 425 million. It's now worth, as of today, 458 million. So they have 38,000 Bitcoin and they made a nice little profit as opposed to sitting on all that fiat cash. And that's exactly why they do it. And Michael Saylor now looks like a genius because, I mean, I mean the profits went up. Galaxy Digital Holdings, that is Mike Novogratz's company. They've almost got 200 million. They got 16,000 Bitcoin. Square, which I thought was kind of odd that they only did 50 million, but whatever. Uh, they bought 4,700 Bitcoin. Hut 8 Mining Corporate, uh, Corporation, sure, they're in the market. Voyager Digital, interesting. Uh, they bought an 8 million. Now they're at 14.8. Not too bad. Riot Blockchain, Bit Digital, Coin Citadel, and on and on and go. And then, as, and then as we get down here, we see uh, other big companies like Block One. They have 140,000 Bitcoin. Uh, this is was odd to me. The Tezos Foundation, they bought into heavily into Bitcoin. They have 24,000. They, they spent almost 300 million, which is, you know, hey, if uh, I would think they would put that more into Tezos, but I guess they got enough because they're the foundation. So sure. And then the new one, Stone Ridge Holdings Com Group, which is private, which is now held by uh, NY Dig. They bought almost 11,000 Bitcoin at 150 million. Look at those geniuses. They just made 15 million, just like that. Good for them. And then we have, uh, these are, this is a little bit uh, different ETF like you got Grayscale, CoinShares, ETC and 21 shares. So don't be uh, fooled by these numbers. Grayscale is not buying and holding. Grayscale is buying and then they're selling off to their, their customers and they, they hold them for them. So uh, even though it says 456,000 Bitcoin, I mean, yeah, it is what it is, but it's in the hands of uh, their investors. So if you tally it all up, it is 785,000, which looks like a lot. But in reality, uh, you just got to take these first numbers here and we're looking at about 3%. So when we talk about decentralization, not so much when we're talking about 
18 companies. And that's scary. I mean, it's good for the market. It'll probably make the price go up. But if we're looking at true decentralization, not the greatest thing. Then to finish up, the article states, the ongoing embrace of Bitcoin by large investors is very much in agreement with the FDA's or Fidelity Digital Assets earlier thesis, which asserts that digital asset, uh, the digital asset, uh, Bitcoin, is an alternative store of value. Look, it started off as a currency. Kind of figured out we couldn't do that right now unless there's better solutions, second layer, or they do something with the code uh, to make it a little bit uh, more appeasing as far as transactions per second, and then the cost can go down. But right now, it is a great store of value. I've always said that I believe that Bitcoin is the new savings account. Gold, silver, Bitcoin should be in everybody's portfolio, everybody's portfolio, especially with, with, with what is going on. If everybody does that, uh, we're going to see some moon time. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.